What's going on guys? It's your boy Brad back with another video. This has been a highly requested video. I've been getting a lot of questions about it. So I decided to go ahead and make the video, try and help you guys understand this concept, how to study for pharmacology. It's a very uh, important piece of nursing. Probably the backbone of nursing are these meds. You have to know the meds, you have to know the mechanisms of actions, what side effects to look for, how to educate your patients, et cetera, et cetera. So, and also it's a very difficult thing to understand and to be able to grow because there's so many medications, so many classes of drugs, so many side effects and things that you have to know, but you do have to know them and they are important. So I felt like I would make this video for you guys, try to help you grasp this concept of pharmacology and hopefully you'll be making A's. Let's get into the video. Nurse Bass Rocks. So basically what I want to do is I want to give you guys an example uh, and this is just going to serve as the foundation for how to study for pharmacology. It's just an example, but take this and apply it to all of the other medications that you need to learn. First thing you want to do is you want to learn the classes, the big major classes of drugs. So for instance, what I'm using here is antihypertensive medications. Okay. There's a lot of subclasses that fall within that right you got beta blockers calcium channel blockers diuretics etc there's a lot the subclass i'm going to use are beta blockers so within beta blockers you have a bunch of different meds these are just some examples first thing you need to know is the mechanism of action of a beta blocker of the subclass in general what's the mechanism of action for beta blockers basically what they are there are beta 2 receptors on the heart when stimulated by epinephrine and norepinephrine Basically, it increases cardiac activity, increases blood pressure, and increases heart rate. Beta blockers block these beta-2 receptors. Therefore, they cannot be stimulated by epinephrine and norepinephrine. Therefore, blood pressure drops. Hence, why it's an antihypertensive medication. Now, once you have that fundamental piece of the mechanism of action, then what you do is take a look at the medications. Most times, these medications have something in common that makes them identifiable. With the beta blockers, for instance, it's that LOL at the end. Now, if you see a medication, a tanolol, labetalol, metoprolol, if you see a medication that ends in LOL, you can be safe in assuming that it's a beta blocker. So now let's say you get a question on a test. You gotta administer labetalol to a patient. What is labetalol? How do you remember that? Okay, it ends in LOL, therefore it must be a beta blocker. Well, we know beta blockers are antihypertensive medications, so we must be trying to reduce the blood pressure. And if you remember how beta blockers work, that mechanism of action, which is so important, then you should be able to get a good idea of what the question is asking you and what this medication does. So what you can do, and you can critically think your way through this. So let's say you get a patient and you know, you're supposed to administer labetalol. So you go in there, what, what's one thing that you want to do before you give an antihypertensive medication? Well, one thing you want to do is you want to check that blood pressure. Okay. That's, that's fundamental. That's one of the things you're going to want to do. And that's something that you should know in regards to this medication. And you check the blood pressure and it's not elevated. It's not 140 over 90. It's not even 120 over 80 for this person. Let's say it's 105 over 60. Okay. What are you going to want to do? Are you going to want to administer the medication as prescribed? Or are you going to want to hold this medication? In this case, you're going to want to hold this medication because their blood pressure is already low. And if you administer a beta blocker, blocking those beta two receptors on the heart, therefore reducing the blood pressure, you're going to reduce an already a uh, hypotensive patient's blood pressure even further, which is gonna be problematic. So it's those kind of things, really understanding the overall class, antihypertensive, understanding the subclass, beta blocker, and the mechanism of action and what it's doing. And therefore, if you have that piece of information and also what the meds end in, if you have those pieces of information, you should really be able to critically think uh, your way through problems. Now let's look at this from a different angle, okay? Let's look at a different class of medications. Patients who have asthma, for instance, they have to have bronchodilator inhalers. You always see, you know, you think in movies, patients with asthma, they're taking that inhaler. Most of the times it's albuterol, albuterol sulfate, okay? Albuterol sulfate is used to dilate the bronchioles in order to get more oxygen into the lungs. They are under the class beta-2 adrenergic agonists. Now, if you recall, beta blockers are beta-2 antagonists, okay? They block beta-2 receptors. 
Albuterol is a beta-2 agonist, therefore it stimulates beta-2 receptors. There are beta-2 receptors on the in the lungs, on the bronchioles, that get stimulated and dilate. But if you remember, there are beta-2 receptors on the heart as well. And if we're stimulating beta-2 receptors in the lungs, we're also stimulating beta-2 receptors on the heart. Therefore, once that happens, we are going to be increasing cardiac output, increasing blood pressure, increasing heart rate. So if you have a patient who is asthmatic, they are experiencing hypertension and they are ordered a beta blocker. Stay with me now. An asthmatic patient is being hospitalized because they had an asthma attack, an acute episode, and they are also having hypertension. Is this patient going to want to receive a beta blocker? The answer is no. If this patient receives a beta blocker, it will decrease the hypertension, but it will also block the beta-2 receptors on the lungs. And once those get blocked, bronchodilation doesn't occur, constriction occurs, and that's problematic. So really, it's just, like I said, it's learning the overall class, the subclasses, the mechanisms of action, and, and the side effects, you know? Like I said, a lot of times you can critically think your way through those side effects. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helped. Just make sure you take these tips to heart, study it in that manner because these medications are very important. Don't just, you know, slack off when it comes to these medications. Make sure you study them very diligently because it's going to keep coming up again and again throughout nursing school and most definitely whenever you get out there on the floor and you got to know these medications and you're responsible for your patient's well-being. Anyways, guys, it's Nurse Bass. Soon to be, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'm dropping videos every week, trying to help you guys out, trying to help you succeed in nursing school because this thing is a beast, but we're all in this together. Anyways, it's Nurse Bass, soon to be, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.